Hey everybody. So I wanted to share with you um, my hydroponic system. As you know, I have a greenhouse and I'm growing a lot of fruits and vegetables. Um, but I wanted to find a way to grow things without using soil. So I stumbled upon um, the hydroponic system. But when I looked into it, of course, you know, hydroponic systems require a lot of electricities and pumps and all of that kind of stuff. And since we're off grid, um, utilizing something like that was just not feasible for us. So I stumbled upon what's called the crack key method. And it's the same system, but it doesn't require any use of electricity. You don't need any pumps and it's really a set it up and forget it system. And I started it and I love it. Um, and I thought to share this with you all, especially especially for those of you that probably live in an apartment or don't have the space or right soil conditions to grow your own food. Um, this is a fun way that you can get started on growing your own food and especially for those busy people that work a lot and don't have time to garden and water and all that kind of stuff. This is something you can do and you can set it up and forget it and your food will grow and it will grow really, really fast. So I'm going to share with you um, how to do this system and everything that you'll need to do it. So let's take a look. Hey okay, everybody, so I'm going to go over the supplies that you're going to need to do this hydroponic crack bee system. So you're going to need some net pots and these that I'm using are three inch net pots um, because I have three inch holes drilled into my container. These come in various sizes depending on what size you need but they're just 35 cents a piece for a three inch size anyway. So they're very inexpensive. Um, you're also going to need some solution for your water and I'm using the Flora Micro and the Flora Grow. Now there are different types of solutions on the market and I really can't speak to which one is better than the other and I think it depends on what exactly it is you're growing in your hydroponic system. But this is what was suggested to me and from what I can tell it works very well. I have no complaints. So. This is what I'm using. And you're also going to need a pH tester kit. Because you have to check your pH for your water. And your pH for your water and your um, hydroponics needs to be at 5.5 to 6.6. .6. So the tester kit comes with a tester solution. And it also comes with an up and down pH so you can adjust your pH if it's not at the right level that you need it to be and then you're going to need a bag of clay pebbles which I have here and this bag was only about 10 bucks so they're not too expensive and what you're going to do is you're going to want to rinse off your clay pebbles before you place them into your um, container and you will need your seedlings, of course, and have your container filled with water. And that's all the materials that you're going to need to do this method. So let's get started and sh let me show you how to do this. Okay, guys, so this is my hydroponic system that I have going on so far. And here I have planted um, Paris Island lettuce. And as you can see, it is just growing so beautifully. Um, so what I did was I started off with a black container. You're going to want to use a black container because um, if you use a light color container, what will happen is that the light from the sun will cause algae and other bacteria to get in your water and that will just ruin your plant. So if you don't have a dark color container, then you probably want to cover it or spray paint it black or something so that no light can get through it and you can use different type of containers you can use an old coffee container you can use a bucket people use different types of um, containers for this system I just chose to use um, this type of container which is a 17 gallon um, storage container that I got from Home Depot um, my husband drilled three inch holes in it and I like the way he drilled these holes because it allows me to plant eight different plants or eight plants. 
and um, they all each have adequate spacing in between them. And that's something that you want to consider um, depending on what you're planting. You want to make sure that there's adequate spacing between each plant so that it's not crowded. And you also want to, if you're planting different plants in one container, you want to make sure that those plants are compatible with each other. So um, that's just a little FYI for those of you that are considering doing okay, this. Okay guys, so I'm going to keep it simple with explaining how this method goes. So what I did was I put my solutions, both the floor grow and the micro grow, into the container. Now you're going to follow the directions and for me I just put a fourth teaspoon 17 times because I have 17 gallons and that's what it costs for per gallon of each and you want to stir that into your water and then you're going to check the pH of your water. Your water needs to be between 5.5 and 6.6 .6. so you'll use your uh, pH tester and make sure you're at the right pH level so as long as you're within that range you're good um, the next thing you're going to do is what I did was um, I have already some sprouts growing and what I have is spinach, mustard greens, arugula, and I have some pak choy. So again, you want your water level in here to reach this top line of your um, cups and you're going to already have your, um, your clay pebbles rinsed off and ready to use. So you're going to put your clay pebbles inside your cups a few at a time and you're going to take your seedlings and I have some pak choy growing in here so I'm just going to take a couple out and I got to be very gentle because they are very delicate and if you're starting your seedlings out with soil you just want to wipe a little bit of the soil off if you have some soil on there it's okay not a big deal don't stress it and you're going to stand your seedling up in your netting pot So that is standing up like that and then you just put it in and so your root is submerged in water and that is it you don't have to do anything else with this your water will go down over time and that's what it's supposed to do because your root is supposed to get air and water and so as you harvest your plant your water will go down but you don't add water to it you don't add any more solution to it I suggest that you do though check your pH level after a couple of weeks and make sure it's still within that 5.5 and 6.6 .6 range. This is what your roots should look like. They should be totally white with no discoloration. As you can see my roots on my Paris Island lettuce are really looking good. And they're very long and they're very good and that's it and it's a simple make it and forget it method and it's really good for you guys that are on the go busy those of you that work a lot and don't have time to do a garden or don't have the space for a garden um, this is an easy method where you can grow your own food small things like herbs what you can um, for this particular method, you want to stick with green leafy vegetables. I'm sorry to kind of go back off track, but um, some people do grow tomatoes and peppers, but um, mainly green leaf leafy vegetables is what you want to stick with, and you can't do root vegetable vegetables, of course. Show your cucumber. But, oh yeah, I do have and, a cucumber that I tried that to, to the one in the dirt. save because it broke off in my garden. So I stuck it in here, and as you can see, it's doing very well. And I planted it at the same time. So you can tell how big it is, bigger than it is. Hold it over to the one by the dirt. Pull your thing out the way. There you 
to really get the sense of the difference between your dirt and, and your... So as you can see, this is the cucumber that I planted in the hydroponics. It broke off of the, the stem of one of these. And I put it in the hydroponics and you can see how much more bigger it is than compared to what I have growing in my soil. So this hydroponic cracking method grows very fast. So it's something that you guys, like I said, that live in an apartment or can't, don't have the space for a garden or a greenhouse and don't have the time. This is something that you can use, especially um, now with all of these weather anomalies. If you've been paying attention to the weather all over the country, all of these storms are really going to cause a shortage in food supplies. And not only that, but a rise in prices. So it's something that you want to consider. Um, I'm happy that I'm capable of growing our own food out here because of that. And um, this is a really good, easy method for anyone that's new to gardening to start out with. Like I said, growing from seed is the most therapeutic thing that you can do. And it's very easy and to grow your own food and start with that healthy lifestyle and being independent and not at the mercy of the system or the supermarkets is really the way to go. So I'm going to do another update as this stuff grows and I'm going to also start another one um, growing my collard greens, honey. Got to have my greens. So I'm going to do another one and I'm going to keep you guys updated on how everything grows in the greenhouse, of course, to the outside garden and with the hydroponics. So I hope this helped you all and until next time, be free. Okay guys, so it's been about two weeks and this is a follow-up on my hydroponic and in that video I planted mustard tender greens and pak choy. So as you can see, my mustard tender greens are really doing well. They are very tall. They're beautiful. So it's been about two or three weeks now and they've grown considerably since um, I did that video. Over here is my pak choy. And it's looking so good, so good. And as you can see, the roots are growing quite considerably, and they're all white. So, and also I have my spinach. It's been hard for me to grow some spinach, I'm telling you. And this one is growing super duper slow. But we'll be patient with that one. But it's growing well. This is supposed to be an arugula, but it's obviously not. I planted arugula, so I don't know what the heck that is. And sometimes that happens. You plant something and something else pops up. But that's all right. Whatever it is, it's growing. So this one is doing well. Now the other one, I had some Paris Island lettuce. And one of the cups I took out. And I mistakenly left it out and sunlight got into that water and it got algae and so I had to discard um, the lettuce. So what I did here was I planted collard greens. So I did this yesterday. I took the collard greens I had in my outside garden that were uh, growing and I put them in here. So they're doing quite well so far. They're hanging in there. And sometimes, you know, a plant will wilt when it's transferred because um, I didn't transfer them at the stage of being um, a sprout so they were a little bit more grown but and they'll do that but just be patient with it it'll perk back up so those are my collard greens in that container and then this and container I Paris Island lettuce and romaine lettuce in this one so I'll do a follow-up video and show you how everything is growing, especially at harvest time. As you can see in my greenhouse, for those of you that watched the greenhouse video, everything has grown considerably since that video. It's been about two, almost three weeks since then. And you can see my tomatoes are very tall. They're already flowering. Um, my cucumbers over here are very tall. I got to go get some cages tomorrow for them so they can stand up because they are very tall. But everything in here is growing so very well. Um, so, yeah, this is just a follow-up, though, on my hydroponic crackety method and crack key method, rather. 
and as you can see my pak choy and my mustard tender greens are doing great so i also have again collard greens and i have some more lettuce and romaine lettuce in this container so i'll have about four of each so they should do well but i really like this method so i just wanted to do a follow-up and show you guys how it's coming the only thing i've had to do again was check the ph and um you know adjust it on this and like i said you do that every couple of weeks just check your ph and make sure it's at the level that it needs to be and in the last video i kind of misinformed you um when your water level drops down like very low if your plant is still at its harvest at its harvesting stage you can add water just don't fill it all the way up um because the top of the roots are where it's getting oxygen and you don't want to put get put water on those oxygenated roots so you just give it a little bit of water so the bottom part of the roots is still submerged in water but not the whole thing so you probably only want to like barely half fill it and then you know of course adjust your solutions um and your ph but that's it it's a easy you know create it and forget it method so i really like this method so that's an update on the hydroponics and you see that the greenhouse is doing well i'll step outside because it is so hot in my greenhouse and i'll show you guys a little bit how my outside garden is growing and doing so um the last video you could barely see my corn popping up but now you see they have gotten very tall in the past couple of weeks so they're doing quite well my husband built me a drip system so that's what these garbage containers are they're filled with water and i have a drip system going in here to make it easier for me to water everything i have some watermelon coming up up in here i took some of the jalapeno peppers and tomatoes that i had growing in my greenhouse and planted them outside here as well and over here i have beans, cabbage, zucchini, squash, got some everything in this one. And I got my girl, my girl zucchini right there because I saw some crows flying around circling my corn. So I had to get my girl zucchini <laughs> over here to stand guard and make sure my corn doesn't get eaten up. So I had fun making my little scarecrow. <laughs> She got her weave. She a fly girl. <laughs> but yeah, so everything is doing great, guys. I will do another video when it's time to harvest some of this stuff so you can see um, everything bearing fruit and how it all comes along. But this is how we're coming so far, and I'm really excited and happy with how everything is growing. So, so far, so good. So I will check back with you guys until the next time. Be free.